Hello, good day, my glorious families. I welcome you to today's chapter of the day. Today, the book we are reading today is the book of James. I love the book of James, most especially the beginning between James 1 verses 1 through 5. I love those verses. I love everything about the book of James. I really don't think there is any book in the Bible that I don't like. Even though many people don't like the book of Genesis, there are so many interesting things in there. The only place, you know, there are some places that are kind of boring, but each book just has its own, you know, its own power. It has its own um, lessons. And, you know, the book of Genesis happens to be the foundation of it all. And the Bible itself is more like a seasonal movie. So if you do not follow through from beginning, you may not really know what is going on. And you may not interpret it well. So we can't just pick a place and dwell on that. We need to know what transpired. How did it happen? What was God really saying? Then we will now talk about, you know, whatever that is next. So let's go into chapter 1 of the book of James. James is servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes dispersed abroad. Greetings. Verse 2. Another headline. Trials and maturity. Consider it pure great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials. This is the part I love most. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. <laughs> Remember I was talking about in my previous videos, two videos, last previous two videos, I talk about, um, I referred to Revelation chapter 4 verse 1, where it was talking about God's voice sounding like a trumpet and linking that trumpet sound into the sound of an elephant. And then I, I use that to address the issue of a goat as an animal, which is how stubborn they are, they are strong headed, they are strong headedness. I don't know if that works. Like they are, they are very strong headed. They, they are so tough, so tough that they, they, they don't listen. They don't listen. So if he says we should compare, uh, we should consider it a great joy. The testing of our faith produces endurance. So I was talking about the goat being very, you know, strong-headed. It teaches us as parents to be very patient because there are some of our children that are kind of strong-headed or maybe just one of them. It might just be two of them or one of them that, that, will, that will be so strong-headed, okay? Not that, not like that of a goat, but what I mean is they are kind of, tough we sometimes you go into families you see some family that have tough kids so these tough kids is a lesson for us to learn is part of you know being patient endurance sometimes when i'm being impatient with my kids and then god tells me the, the, the you know my spirit will just tell me okay that if you're not if you're not patient with them then how are you going to be patient in your ministry because all of these uh, pastors, you see, they go through things too. I'm talking of good prophets of God. They go through things. When you have shepherds under you, you have to control a lot of things. So let's read on. It says, so that you may be mature and complete. Okay, testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect so that you may be matured. You may be matured and complete, lacking nothing. Hmm. A lot of time when things happen to me and I'm being grow, I'm you know I'm being I'm nagging or I'm having some kind of I'm being impatient. At the end of it all, I just tell God I'm so sorry because I realize that sometimes it's more like a test, and all I just tell God is that yes, I feel again, I feel the test, I feel the test, I feel the test. Help me. So let's just, um, you know, let's learn to, to be endurance, to practice endurance. Because without patience, we can't even work with God. Or we'll just fall out of faith. 
It's not easy. We won't work with God and and be impatient. It's, it doesn't go together. So verse 5 says, Now if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives it or gives it to who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without doubting. That's another thing. So we will pray fast. But you see that little seed of faith in them is lacking. Then they, 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 they just give up even after all the hard works. That's why I said when we are open or believing God for something, let's go to do something else. You don't sit there and say, ah, God, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Get busy so that you don't fall out of patience. Okay, so uh, we were on uh, verse 5, and it says, okay, verse 6 now, it says, but let him, let him ask in faith without doubting, for the doubter is like the <laughs> surgeon, surgeon sea, driven and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord, being double-minded and unstable in all his ways. Hey, oh. You see, faith alone can fetch you, even if you're supposed to collect a dollar. Faith can fetch you more when you have faith in God. Especially when when you when you put all your somebody like me, if I put my hope in man, in man, they always fail me. But if I put my hope in God, I just give up on him completely. I stay helpless and expect his help. That's when I get help. So some of you might be like that. Let's just learn how God operates with us. Verse 9. Let the brother of, um, of humble circumstances boast in his exhortation, but let the rich boast in his humiliation, because it will pass away like a flower of the field. For the sun rises and, the, and together with the scorching wind, dries up the grass its flower falls off <laughs> and its beautiful appearance perishes in the same way the rich person will wither away while pursuing his activities blessed is the one who endures trials because when he has stood the test he will receive the crown of life that god has promised to those who love him mm, i love that one so let's see verse 19. I'm not sure we'll finish it, but wherever we start, we'll leave it there. Hearing and doing the word. Hearing and doing the word. No, verse 13. Where is it? Verse 13, sorry. No one undergoing a trial should say, I am being tempted by God, since God is not tempted by evil. <laughs> and he, he himself doesn't tempt anyone. But each person is tempted each, each person is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed by his own evil desire. Then after desire has conceived, has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is fully grown, it gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of light who does not change like shifting shadows. By his own choice, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would be a kind of fruitful of his, will be a kind of fruitful of his creatures. Verse 19, hearing and doing the word. My dear brothers and sisters, understanding this, Understand this, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. Therefore, riding yourselves of all moral, all moral, all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, humbly receive the implant, implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But, he, but be doers of his word and not hearers by deceiving yourselves. I'm going to stop right here. You can see I'm trying to be rushy, but it's not working. Anyway, this is verse 22, and I want you to read from there to 26. Thank you, and i see you next time. Bye.